happy to join the Reimagining Education Conference of this year. I had such an amazing experience my first time, which was last year, and I'm very happy to contribute again for this one. We're going to have this uh, short session, which is um, 30 minutes, uh, and it's coming from a research that I've been doing um, that is linking two of my big passions, which is biology and movement and dance. And I've, uh, I started by doing this with animals, then with a friend of mine, and we developed the same experiment of inspiring dance from plants. And then we started with what do we do about the fungi? It's something, it's a topic that has been trending a lot, I feel, in the communities and in the people around the world who are concerned about the state of our planet and wanting to learn more and more about the environments that surround us. And so what came up when I started imagining what fungi can teach us is not a movement thing, but for today's session, you can decide. You can decide to sit down, to lie down, to jump around. You can decide to do whatever you want. And basically it's a guided meditation which means that I'm going to tell you a story. And through this story, your only task is to see what starts coming up, to see what your body feels like doing, to see where your mind goes to. And the inspiration is the fungi, which is this crazy beings that inhabit the planet with us. I'm happy to announce that I have three people I R L in real life doing this with me, <laughs> which is very cool. So we bring a reimagining education conference to the non-virtual world. <laughs> and um, uh, yes, uh, we are part right now of a pro uh, project. We are in Greece and we are part of a two week project in which we are learning about permaculture and uh, we talk about fungi every day also. So it's amazing. <laughs> uh, all right. So because uh, uh, of what I said, you can decide where in your room or in the space that you are, where you want to be. You, if you want to be standing, if you want to be sitting, if you want to be lying down, um, you can uh, choose. So take a look around yourselves and decide where you would like to be for the next 20 minutes. In, it can be a comfortable or uncomfortable position. You know, you know what uh, you would like to explore for now. Also, depending if you've been sitting for a long time or not, maybe you want to stand up. You you choose, and you can change throughout the session. Ah, oh, there's a chat going on. We are in the fungi zoom room. Woohoo! <laughs> It was not planned. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, I also see a lot of people that have their cameras off. I, I think it's fine. This can also be a very personal thing for you, but I say hello to you. And if you feel like turning it on at any point, you're very welcome. <laughs> um, so now that you've chosen your position, I want to invite you to wherever you are, I will give you one minute to slowly start abandoning all the tension in your body. And this will be your body slowly, slowly dying. So starting from now, life is going to slowly abandon your body so this means all the tension will leave your muscles all the body parts stop being able to support themselves they become heavier and heavier you abandon any strength that you might be making you can feel your 
heart slowly becoming slower in its beat. <clears throat> So you give in to this thing that is happening to you. And you realize that this is the death of the organism. All the inner workings of your body start stopping. The metabolism has nothing to do anymore. And you abandon your body to however it is. But this is not the end. So slowly as you have your body abandoned as you let go of any pressure of life that you might have had two minutes ago they have all faded away and start feeling trying to sense the ground under you it can be under your feet under your legs or many meters away from you. Start trying to understand where the ground is. And your body, that is now a pile of organic matter, without tension, without function, just these very juicy, juicy nutrients, starts welcoming other beings to come and explore it. In this limbo that you are in, between your previous life and your death, there's a small powder of beings that starts landing on your body. and goes into the cells that were previously working and are now just surrendered. And where these small, small, small pieces of dust land, it starts growing roots. It starts growing these threads that connect all over your body. And they connect to each other in your body as if your body is the ground, it's the soil. You can feel the roots going through you. And expand from you into the ground. <clears throat> so in this way, you have these threads that are growing in you, into the ground, and these meet other threads that were already in the ground. So you understand that you are now touching an already built network. an underground network in this dark, dark corner of the world. And this network is made of mycelia, these endless threads, filaments, that is a network that can sense and can communicate. So it's connecting you to any beings that are around you. It can be trees, can be grass, 
flowers, other roots, whatever plants exist in your room, whatever beings might be around you, animals, other humans. And through these threads connecting you, you can give and receive from them nutrients, water, energy. Try to feel what it's like to feel them, to receive and to give from these beings around you. that these threads are constantly giving and receiving. And as you are giving energy and water and food and receiving energy, water, nutrients, this network keeps expanding, the roots keep growing, the mycelium keeps growing and expanding to the sides, under, and it keeps also digesting the tissues of your body. So your body doesn't look like it did when it was alive, it's now being slowly composted, digested, So that the energy that was stored in it will be used again. And the network keeps expanding. And the very interesting ability of the network is that it can also move consciousness from place to place inside of the network. It creates a dense nodule, a ball of concentrated threads that moves from place to place underground. So try to feel your consciousness travel to another place of the network that it touches. Try to feel what it's like to have the center of your awareness travel very far because the network is very, very far. It reaches far and wide. And you can go and sense somewhere else while you receive and you give energy, nutrients. And then you understand that this network's is endless inside. It's one of the biggest organisms in Earth, on Earth, in the Earth. It's so simple and so complex, always expanding, made of tiny, tiny threads, and it connects all the beings that are touching the ground. So because you are connected to the network, you can communicate with all of them. They can know who you are, you can know who they are, ones that look like you, ones that don't look like you. So feel yourself reacting to these interactions. Who are you identifying? Who are you touching? Who is stimulating parts of this network? What information do you have around you?
and all the time the you that I'm mentioning is not your body anymore. Your body is now just soil. It's just part of the soil that is feeding this network. And your consciousness is going from place to place. And also sometimes you understand that a part of this network is in a place that does not have nutrients for it. And so it makes no sense to continue to expand there. It's a very resilient and efficient network. So you understand that the parts of you that are in places that have nothing for you, you can let them die. You can let the structure part that is not receiving food slowly die away also. So try to feel what it's like to let parts of you die, the ones that are not being fed. And again, this network is letting you communicate with all the beings around you. It's touching all the roots of trees, flowers, herbs, other fungi, communicating, telling messages to each other. And your consciousness keeps moving from place to place, traveling in the network, Checking out what's up. And this mycelium, this mycelia, in this way shows intelligence. It's adapting, it's sensing, and it grows in a shape that reminds us of blood vessels or of rivers or of nerve cells or of course like roots from one thread more threads come out and it keeps expanding and expanding covering the whole world communicating from place to place And now remembering that you used to have a body that died, that was transformed into fertile ground. In that body, where the mycelium started growing, it starts creating something that grows up instead of down. So from your body, that is now nutrients, Something starts growing that maybe you can think of like a flower. It's called a flowering body. It's not a flower, but it can have many shapes and many colors. And this little body that grows vertically up is what carries your spores, which are your seeds. The things that you are meant to throw out in the world to grow somewhere else. So feel this body growing and try to see what is its shape and what is its color. Is it one bigger one? Is it less smaller ones? 
what shape does it make and what colors does it have while it's growing and growing slowly, slowly up. So you have the network growing in the ground and you have this body growing up. And it grows and it grows. It has more and more spores inside of it. And suddenly, when the right situation comes, it releases the spores into the air. And the spores are flying away and the flowering body is decaying. So now let this little flower die again. The colorful, shapely part of you, let it die. But the mycelia remain. It continues connected, alive, searching, sending and receiving. And your spores were carried far away in the air by the wind to create mycelia somewhere else that will grow and expand. And as you keep feeling this mycelia expanding and growing underground, I want you to, wherever you are, start speaking in a whisper Whatever it is that you are feeling right now, what are you receiving and sending in a network? So, I want to hear you, even if you are muted. Start whispering just whatever is crossing your mind and whatever is crossing your body in whatever language you want, as long as you whisper it. Start letting the words out as if they are the spoil spores in the wind. Let your voice come out. And let the words come out as if it's the mycelia growing with all the information that you're receiving and transmitting, let the words come out. As if you are doing a free flow of speech that is not for anyone except for yourself. Let those, the whisper come out. Tell yourself what it's like to be connected to the whole world, to have died, but to have life. What are you receiving and sending in the network? What spores did you send out into the world? Let the voice come out. And hopefully if you were speaking out loud in the whisper, you can start letting the whisper die. And as you do, you remember that you 
still have a human body that has a throat from which you can make sounds, a head with eyes and ears and a nose that is connected to a spine with a body full of bones and muscles with two arms with two legs with two lungs in which you can give a very big nice inhale and feel this air that goes into your body to give you life feel the metabolism working again Maybe the stomach has some food inside that you are digesting, giving you energy. And whatever you need to come back to the human body, you can shake a bit, you can get up, you can dance around to remind yourself, oh, ah, I'm human. I actually didn't die. I'm still here. Slowly coming back to human existence. But remembering that uh, what I told you is actually happening all the time. Everywhere that you are, these beings exist and we are interacting with them. And they are part of what allows us to stay alive. So I hope that you can go in your next minutes, hours, days, trying to feel what, what kind of roots are hiding under the ground and what kind of mycelia yeah. are traveling around the earth. Yeah.